container types. For example, here we have this class tag cloud. We're going to implement this from scratch together. With this class, we can keep track of the number of various tags on a block. For example, how many articles do we have that are tagged with Python or JavaScript and so on? So because this class represents a container, it supports various operations around containers. Here are a few examples. Let me create an object. OK. Now, because this is a container, we can get the number of items in this container. We can also get an item by its key. For example, we can get the number of articles tagged with Python. We can also set that. And finally, we can iterate over this container. So for tag in cloud, we can print each tag and count. These are the operations that are supported by this custom container type. So let me show you how to implement a class like this. We create a class called a tag cloud. Now, internally, we're going to use one or more of the built-in data structures, like lists, dictionaries, and so on. In this case, I'm going to use a dictionary because it allows us to quickly get the number of given tag. So first, we define a constructor, self. And in this constructor, we initialize tags attribute to an empty dictionary. Now, we can optionally add a method like add that takes a tag. Now, here we should check to see if we have this tag in our dictionary. If we don't have it, we're going to set its value to 1. Otherwise, we're going to increment it by 1. Here's one way to implement this logic. So self.tags, we use the get method to get an item by this key and supply a default value if we don't have that. Now we get the count incremented by one, and finally, we set the value for this key. So self.tags of tag, we set it to this new value. OK, let's test our program up to this point. So I'm going to create a cloud object and then call the add method a few times. Let's add Python three times and then print cloud.tags. Save the changes run the program. So in our dictionary, we have one key value pair, Python set to three. Beautiful. Now you might be wondering why I created a custom class instead of using a plain old dictionary. The reason for this is because I want to make this a little bit smarter than a typical dictionary. What if we add a Python tag with the capital P? Technically, this is the same tag as the lowercase Python. So when we run this program, we should see one Python tag repeated three times. Let's run the program. That's not what we get. We get two separate items. This is how a typical dictionary behaves. So in this class, I'm going to take care of case sensitivity. Whatever tag we receive here, we're going to convert it to lowercase when setting it as well as when reading it. Now save the changes. Run the program one more time. The problem is gone. Beautiful. So with this class, we're encapsulating the complexity around the case sensitivity of tags. When using this class, we no longer have to worry about lowercase or uppercase characters. So our code looks cleaner and simpler. All that complexity is encapsulated in the tag cloud class. It's not visible to the rest of our program. OK, now let's take this to the next level. I want to be able to read the count of a tag like this using square brackets. To do this, we need to implement a magic method called getItem. So define getItem. It should take self as well as a key. In this case, tag. In this method, we're going to return self.tags.get this tag. And if we don't have it, we want to return 0 by default. And once again, we should convert this to lowercase. As we can see, with this implementation, we can easily get the number of a given tag. We can't do this with a typical dictionary. If we don't have the Python tag, our dictionary would throw an error. Now let's take this to the next level. With the current implementation, we can only read the number of a given tag. We cannot set it like this. To do that, we need to implement another magic method called setItem. It's pretty straightforward, so define setItem. 
it takes three parameters, self, key, and value. In this case, our key is tag, and our value is just count. So here we set self, the tags of tag, the lower to this new count. So with this implementation, we can set the number of a given tag. Now, in order to be able to get the number of items in this tag cloud, we should implement the len magic method. Again, very, very easy. So define len takes only the self parameter. And here we return len of self, the tags. And finally, to make this iterable, so we can iterate over it using a for loop, we need to implement another magic method. That is iter. So define iter. It takes self. Now all we have to do is to use one of the built-in functions to get an iterator object. An iterator object is an object that walks a container and gets one item at a time. So we call iter, which is one of the built-in functions. What do we want to iterate over? In this case, self, the tags. So this function returns an iterator object, which gives us one item at a time in a for loop. So we simply return it. 